Hi, my name is Shalom Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet 2 Gruber project. This is the admin track of the Gruber training. In this video, I'll be talking about the subject API, and this is part one. Here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. I'll give an introduction of what the subject API is, then I'll talk about some of the subject adapters available. I'll talk about some of the configuration here too, but there will be more configuration topics in part two. So first of all, what is the subject API? You can use the subject API to integrate with your identity management system so that Grouper can know about the subjects that you have. These subjects can be used to create memberships, privileges, or permissions in Grouper. Subjects can include people that you have in your institution, but can also include other types of entities that uh, you may want to associate with groups or permissions. Also, grouper groups themselves are subjects as well, since, for instance, groups can be added as members of other groups. With the subject API, you can avo avoid replicating all of your subject data into grouper. There's no need to have a feed from your IDM that populates people in grouper. Subjects have the following properties associated with them. First, they have an ID. This is a unique identifier for the subject. They have a type which can be person, group, or application. They have a source ID which identifies the subject source that they came from. There's a name and description also. The grouper UI by default uses the description to display subjects in membership lists. And they can have other attributes as well. Other attributes can include other identifiers. For instance, at Duke, the subject ID that we use for Duke affiliated people is the Duke unique ID which is a seven digit unique identifier. However, each person also has another identifier, which is their net ID. The Duke unique ID is a subject ID because it's less likely to change for us. In addition to other identifiers, you may also have other attributes that you want available to Grouper. For example, for people, you may want to have Eduperson Affiliation or OU available as other attributes so that they can be displayed in the Grouper UI or retrieved through Grouper web service calls. Here's the architecture diagram of Grouper as of Grouper 2.1. You can see that the subject API with the source adapters is a link between the IDM and Grouper. Grouper makes subject queries using the Grouper API in real time as needed. So now I'll talk about the various source adapters available. The first one is the group source adapter. This is used to resolve grouper groups and roles as subjects. This allows them to be added as members of other groups or assigned privileges or given permissions. The subject API is largely configured in the sources.xml file. Each source has its own source element in the XML file. In the case of this source adapter, usually you can stick with the default. The subject type for this source adapter is group. The next source adapter is the entity source adapter. Again, this is configured in the sources.xml file and usually doesn't require any changes. This is used to resolve grouper local entities as subjects if you're using this feature of grouper. The subject type here is application. The first two source adapters are used to resolve internal grouper objects as subjects. Now we have some source adapters that can be used to resolve external objects as subjects. The first of these is the JDBC source adapter. You can use this source adapter to resolve subjects in relational databases. In the most typical use case, these subjects would be people, for instance, in your, in your person registry. But it can be other types of subjects as well. For instance, perhaps you have uh, service accounts or objects such as computers. In the sources.xml file, you first have to provide the database connection information. There are two connection providers available. The first one um, is the default one if one isn't provided. Using this option, you have to provide all of the connection information in the sources.xml file, including the JDBC URL, the username, and the password. Though when you specify the password value, it can either be an actual password or a file name that contains an encrypted copy of the password. If you use the second connection provider, the Grouper JDBC connection provider, uh, the connection settings come from the grouper.hibernate.properties file. Uh, 
You can use this option if the source is located on the same database as your grouper registry. The benefit here is to avoid duplication of connection settings and reuse pulled connections which reduce the number of open connections to your database. For this source adapter, next you specify a few queries that Grouper can run to find subjects. Grouper internally stores the subject ID for subjects. The first query allows Grouper to find a subject in the source based off of the subject ID. The second query allows Grouper to find a subject by another identifier. For instance, when users authenticate to the Grouper UI, the remote user value is assumed to be either a subject ID or one of the subject's uh, identifiers. Finally, the last query is to perform a search. The search may include a substring search on uh, the source attribute that contains subject names, for instance. It should probably include the ID and identifiers as well. For instance, in the Grouper UI, when you perform a subject search to find a person to add to your group, this query would get used. There are methods in the Grouper or in the subject API that allow all of these different types of searches to happen. These queries are assumed to return different columns for each of the attributes associated with the subject source. For instance, there would be a name, an ID, and a description column, uh, but there may be other columns for other attributes as well. Grouper comes with an example subject source using this adapter. Uh, this source includes two tables in the Grouper registry, which are the subject and the subject attribute tables. You can look at this example as a starting point if you use this adapter. So next you have to configure um, the columns returned in the queries to map to the subject ID, the name, and the description. The prime value in these three cases map to the columns in the queries. So you may have to update them based on how you define your queries. And finally, there's an option to specify the other identifiers. This value is comma separated for each um, identifier. So the next source adapter is the alternate JDBC source adapter. This assumes that all of the subject data is in one table or view, which elim eliminates the need to define queries in the sources.xml file. That could be a benefit if your queries would otherwise be complicated and you would rather move all of that logic into your database instead. Also, another noteworthy difference is how the source adapter performs searches. I'll talk a bit more about that in a couple of slides. Um, also, the database connection settings with this source adapter are similar to the ones in the previous source adapter. So with this source adapter, you would specify the table or view that contains the subject data. It's assumed that this table or view will have a column that identifies the subject ID as well as the name and description. You can see here how that's done. There's also a column that's used for searches. This is not used when you explicitly search based off of ID or identifier, but used when you're performing another search. The value of the column should be lowercase for case insensitive searches and should contain whatever terms you'd like to have to make a search find a particular row. So for instance, you probably want to add name in there. Uh, you may also want to have the ID and identifiers as well. The various values that you use can be comma separated. For better performance, it's probably a good idea to have the data in this column already pre-computed in your database rather than depending on the view to handle that. This includes having the data in lowercase instead of using a database function to do that with a view. The source adapter will take the search value and split it on white space and then just make sure that each of the tokens is a substring of the search column. So as an example, with this method, if a particular row contains the search value John X Doe, but the search uh, being done is for John Doe, that row would still be a match since the search column for that row contains both the string John and the string Doe. The next option here uh, that you can specify is for sorting, um, and this is optional. Next, you can specify additional identifiers. The param name would have the uh, value as shown with an incrementing index for each identifier. Uh, 
The param value would be the column name. You can specify additional attributes that become part of the subject object. Again, incrementing indexes are used. The first part is to specify the column name. The second part is to specify how the attribute is named when retrieved from the subject object. The last source adapter is the JNDI source adapter. You can use this source adapter to resolve subjects that are located in your LDAP or Active Directory. As of Grouper version 2.1, this source adapter now uses VTLDAP to talk to LDAP. This library takes into account performance improvements, including connection pooling. You can specify connection settings directly in the sources.xml file, or you can use an external properties file uh, with the settings. In both cases, you can still have a separate file for the encrypted password. Using an external properties file has the advantage of allowing more BTLDAP configuration, uh, like pooling customizations. In Grouper 2.1, the example sources.xml file contains an example of specifying the connection settings in that file. If you want to use an external properties file, you would remove those settings and add the XML that's on this slide. You would then create an LDAP.properties file with the appropriate settings. In the 2.1 um, API tarball, there, there is not an example of the LDAP.properties file, but you can get an example from the PSP tarball. Next, you have to specify the queries uh, based on LDAP filters that included search page and a scope. Uh, you'll have separate queries for searches based on ID identifier and the more generic, typically human-driven search. The example sources.xml files have examples of this. And once again, you have to specify which attributes in LDAP are the subject ID, the name, and the description. And here's an example of that. And finally, you can specify additional attributes to be returned in searches. These attributes would get included in the LDAP search and associated with the subject object as attributes of the subject. So that's all for this tutorial. You can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And here are some more links uh, with information. Thanks.